good? I was just at first service, but there's some places I was like, ouch, like, ouch, right? It hit everyone. Just like, you know, I think he gave the example of going to the grocery store and you just complaining about, you know, the line and just, I said, ooh, that, ooh, me, ouch on me. That's complaining and you don't think how you get cut up or you at work and there's a real issue. There's a manager that has a special personality, we'll call it. There's a real issue and someone, a coworker comes to your desk and they start complaining and before you know it, you're cut up in not complaining, you know? So that word was really, really a good word. And you know, you should listen to it over and over again. And he was talking about, briefly mentioned something about the mouth, how important, of course, that mouth is. And so when he um, asked for me to minister, I was like, oh, the Holy Spirit is like, I already know. So I'm gonna talk to you about the heart and mouth connection. The heart and mouth connection. What is in your heart will eventually come out of your mouth. Your mouth is connected to your heart. And what comes out of your mouth, whether good or bad, will be determined as what you put down in it. Amen. It is always, it says that when it's with the heart, the man believeth, and with the mouth, confession is made. So our mouth is an indicator of your heart condition. You can write that one down. Your mouth is an indicator of your heart condition. Is your con heart condition good or is it bad based on what you're saying? This is one of the things that only you, you can figure that out. Or if I talk to you long enough, you can figure it out. We must pay close attention to the words that's coming out of our mouth because it's reflecting something that's in our hearts. We must locate ourselves so we can stop speaking doubt and speak faith and we can stop complaining and start praising. Okay? We have to locate ourselves to change from speaking doubt to faith and stop complaining and start praising. Only you can do that for yourself. So you can't help your neighbor on that one. You can help them by helping them. Okay, sister, you're talking wrong. But tonight, I don't want you to think about, oh, so-and-so speaks wrong. Let's just look ourselves, like Michael Jackson says, in the mirror, okay? How does that go? Oh, yeah, all right. Stop it. Y'all gonna get me in trouble. Have you ever blurted out something and immediately apologize and make some kind of excuse thinking the excuse will wipe away the hurt that you had just inflicted and the excuse normally goes something like that you know what I'm sorry I don't even know why I said that you know what I had a bad day you know what that is not even me you know I am so sorry but I want to tell you that is you that is because if it's not in your heart, you won't say it. So, of course, we never want to admit when the ugly side of us come out. We, it's very painful for us to admit it. But you did admit it, and when that person have a hurtful reaction, then you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> let me try to fix it. And you're thinking, you know what, I didn't really mean that. You know, I'm just having a really stressful day, you know, and you know, my supervisor and everybody else's problem is why you said what you said. But it's really, you have to own, you know what? I said that, that was probably inside of me. I shouldn't have said it. Maybe I have some kind of residual or something against you that I haven't resolved, but what came out of me when the pressure hit it, so just apologize and move forward. But don't say, you know what? I don't even know why I said that. That's not even me. Well, yes, it is. Because the Bible says what comes out of your mouth was birthed in your heart, whether good or whether bad. So we cannot ignore the connection between our mouths and our heart. You hear me? 
You cannot ignore the connection between your mouth and your heart. Let's go to Luke 6, 45. So my accent might come out a little bit tonight. Is that okay? Normally I try to tamer. What? What's the right word? Tame it, but I'm not going to do that. Amen. Look 645. A good man at a good treasure of his heart bring forth what? Come on, y'all have to participate. Did you have coffee? Did you have a red bowl? You had a red bowl. <laughs> Don't make a habit of drinking those, but I'm not a nutritionist, praise the Lord. So let's read that again. You can, can you see this on the screen this side? Okay, can you see on the screen this side? Okay, middle section? Okay, all right. So, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth what? Okay, thank you. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bring forth what? For out of the abundance of his heart. His mouth speaks. So out of the good treasure, out of the treasure, which that treasure that we, we want to refer to is the treasure of the word of God, the treasure of faith. But whatever good that you put in your heart, you're going to bring forth good. Out of your mouth, it's going to speak. If you have evil in your heart, out of your mouth, you're going to speak evil. So you cannot plant evil, evil in your heart and expect to speak good things. You know, Pisa, some people that are just so negative, they just, I don't care what you do, where you go, it's just negative, negative, negative. They don't find any perspective, a positive perspective out of any situation. It's because that's in their heart. And after you've said it so many times, even at the first time you don't really believe it, after you repeat something so many times or you've been in an environment where somebody tells you something so many times, you will start to believe it and that becomes real to you and that's when it comes out of your mouth. So that's why we have to, so what is your, as I'm speaking, locate yourself. Not your neighbor, just yourself. So when you speak, it's a clear indicator of, okay, do I need to go, go get a heart transplant? Do I need to uproot some things maybe that I grew up with? Maybe that I speak and I'm not putting the word in my heart. So there's unbelief, there's doubt in there. So that's all I speak. And I don't have the word inside of me, so that's all I speak. So you have to, like I said, we're going to locate ourselves. And today's message is so we can go ahead and those that need to change, change. Those that need to continue, continue. Those that need to make a few adjustments, we'll make a few adjustments. So we're not walking in condemnation. Say amen. amen. So there are two things as far as the word. The word must be in two places. Your mouth and your heart. The word must be in two places. What? The word must be in two places. What? Romans 10, 8. Let's go there. So if you're speaking negative words, if you're uh, speaking um, doubt-filled words, you need to go ahead and do some transformation. But it says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth. And in your heart. Isn't that what it said? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. Isn't that how you became saved? It says believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it in your heart and you confess. So that's really the law. You believe and you confess. So you, you know, if you don't have the word, what are you confessing? You know, because the word alone, the word, I had it later, because the word is programmed to work. You know that, right? The word is programmed to work, not me making it work, not me trying to get it to work. It's already programmed to work. Me putting it in my heart and speaking it is helping me to just come in alignment with the word of God. Because, you know, in this realm, it says that we have been saved, but our bodies has not been redeemed. Our physical body, that's the last thing we're waiting to be redeemed. And when we go be with him, we'll have that complete. So that's why in that soul, soulish realm, you're fighting against it. You want to do wrong. What Romans says, the, the thing that I want to do, I do not do. And the things I don't want to do, I do. 
What is the solution? The solution is, is Jesus. The solution is the word of God. But if you don't have the word in your heart so it can come out of your mouth, you are only going to speak death. I want to talk to you about your heart condition today. Remember when you first got saved, or probably not too long ago for some of you, that you were on fire for God. Somebody meets you and you, you know, somebody tell you about the situation and you're like, in the name of Jesus, I know the scripture for that. You are more than overcome in the name of Jesus. You're going to prosper. You're going to be in good health. And he said, you was healed. Not going to be healed. You was healed in the name of Jesus. For God, you say, you know what? I know this sister that got healed. You need to go talk to her because she is going to minister to you. Hallelujah. You know what? I had a headache. It, when a situation come, that's all that came out of you is the word of God. You would sit in your car, you would meditate, and you would read, and you would fall in love with that word. You would put it in your heart. But if we start being around and we start speaking negative, slowly but surely, our actions start following. Before you know it, you're dialing back on the word of God. You were like, you know, come on, Lynn. It's not that serious. You know, we are under grace. We are not under law. So we don't have to tithe, sister. Or, you know, I don't have to go to church. You know, God loves me whether I'm in my bedroom watching, you know, on the app. Or so you start making excuses for everything that you used to be so passionate about. Suddenly, not suddenly, over a period of time, you start dialing back on the word. You don't even confess it anymore. That doesn't just happen. It's because you stop depositing that word and you stop speaking the word. And over time, you start seeing it like a car. You shouldn't drive on E in this here, Alaska. You know that, right? Especially with this 15 degrees weather we're, about, we're having. You shouldn't. But after a while you're on E, it will go. And for some of your car, it will tell you, okay, you still got 10 miles or whatever. But after a while, that car is going to stop. I don't care how much you pray in the Holy Ghost and ask the Holy Ghost to move it. It's not going to move. It's going to stop. That's what happens when we stop depositing the word in our hearts and we start speaking it. We start seeing the effects of it when we start speaking doubt instead of faith. We start believing the voice of the enemy. The Bible says, not listening to the voice of the stranger. We start being confused about what the promise is as far as healing, as far as financial prosperity, as far as family prosperity. It's just like, you know what? I just think they're just taking it too much. I think you're just too spooky, Lynn. Well, let me be spooky. If you think I'm being a fool, just go on and let me be a fool. Because you're feeling happy about me being a fool, just let me be, be, be a fool and quote the word. Amen? Don't worry about what people say. Just keep speaking the word. Keep planting the word in your heart. And let your manifestation speak for you. Hallelujah. You ain't had to defend yourself. Just live your life. Plant the word in your heart and speak the word. And let that speak for you. Let that speak. It's like, you know, heaps of what it says. A fire on the enemy's head. Just live your life and speak the word, not your word, God's word. Because if you speak your word, there will be some problems. Amen? God always backs up his word. Amen? So don't be, think just because you know a scripture that is in your heart. Don't be, you know, because you, you know, my scripture for my healing a long time ago, Jeremiah 30, 17, for he shall restore health unto me and heal me of all of my wounds, say of the Lord. I was once an outcast, saying no one wants her. So you can say, oh my gosh, yes. And you can know that head knowledge, but if you don't get that thing in your heart, he has restored health unto me and heal me of my wounds. Hallelujah. I thank you for healing me. Hallelujah. I thank you for blessing me. Hallelujah. They didn't want me, but you want me, Jesus. I thank you. When somebody tell you, how are you doing? I am healed. I am well. I am whole. They're looking at you saying, look at your body. I am healed. I am well. I am whole. Look at your situation. I know what's happening. I am healed. I am well. I am whole. 
soul. Hallelujah. It is well with me. You, I know, sister, there's something going It is well. Not because I made it well, but because of the word of God. Because I'm not backing it up. The word, Jesus is backing his own word up. Like I said, it's programmed to work. It's just got to come out of your mouth. Let's go to Psalm 119, 11. Are you being blessed tonight? So speaking the word, put a deposit in your heart. If you don't make a deposit, you can't make any withdrawals. Right? Y'all know that, right? Because go to the bank and try to get $2,000 and you only got $500. <laughs> All right. 119.11. What does it say there? Your word have I hidden in what? Let's say that again. Your word I have hidden in that I might not sin against you. Your word, O oh Lord, I've hidden in my heart. So if you don't put the word in your heart, you're going to sin against him. You hear that? It says, your word, O oh Lord, I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So if when you put your word in your heart, you will please God. You will be able to fight against the flesh, the carnal ways of the flesh. You'll be able to fight against the carnal ways of handling things. But if you, that's how you believe God, that's how you please God, that's not how you fall into sin. But if you're not putting the word in your heart, sin is going to follow. And you, for you to not believe God's word, that sin you know that for you not to believe him it's sin because you're not gonna, your behavior you're not gonna believe him to change you whatever habit that you have you're not gonna so you say father God I'm gonna put the word deposit the word in my heart so I will know how to handle situations so I will know how to walk in love so I will know how to speak things that be not as though they were so I can go ahead and truly walk in the love of God cut the flesh want to touch somebody the flesh want to tell you off the flesh want to tell secretly on you that you don't know I told on you that's what the flesh want to do but when you put that word in your heart you will not sin against him you will not sin against anybody but I tell you so the word is our protection the word helps guard us what the scripture says guard your heart with all diligence because out of that heart flows the issues of life. You hear me? So don't just quote that scripture. Really guard your heart. I've had, I think in the last probably eight months or something, I've really, like, no, November of last year, so that would really be a year, right? The spirit told me just guard your heart. Because there are situations and scenarios that will come to try to get in your heart and pollute your heart toward people. Pollute your heart toward things, toward things that are happening in your life. Harden your heart toward in a bad way. Not harden your heart against difficulty so you won't be walking around all broken all the time. But things come and people do things and if you don't guard your heart, you will get better. You will be an angry person. You won't be a genuine person. You won't have that godly sincerity, that godly compassion. So you have to guard against that. And only the word can do that for you. So guard your heart with all diligence. Because it is your protection. Let's go to Joshua 1.8. Many people think that if they keep saying something... And saying it that will come to pass but that was partly right when you believe in your heart and you don't doubt you will have what you say amen and the way that you will not doubt is if you put that word in there Joshua 1 8 we'll just wait for it to come into the screen the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth the book of the law what is that the book of the law is what shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to what is written in it thank you y'all caught that 
So the word, he's saying, do not let it leave your mouth. Never stop saying the word. It says meditate on it, which is a word to way to download in your heart, is to meditate on the word of God day and night that you may observe to do. So if you don't put the word, meditate on the word, meditate, murmur, think on it, speak it, murmur, think on it, speak it, see yourself being in that word, by his stripes I am healed, see, murmur that word, say, Father God, I thank you, by your stripes I am healed, see yourself being healed, and then speak your healing. That's what you're meditating on all day. You at your desk, you say, Father God, I thank you. You say, by your stripes, I am healed. I thank you for my healing. Hallelujah. You're thinking about, you see yourself healed. You see yourself testifying. That's how you meditate day and night that you may observe to do. If you don't read the word and get it in your heart, how are you going to know how to please God? How are you going to know what to do? And how are you going to know what to say? If you don't put it in your heart so you can observe to do, the opposite is going to happen. You're only going to speak doubt. You're going to speak whatever you see, whatever you hear, and whatever you feel. That's not a good place to be. So say meditate. 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 So it says, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So you're not going to have good success until the word does not depart from your mouth until you meditate on it day and night so you can observe to do then you will have good success do you see the progression there you put the word of God in your heart you meditate you see it and then you speak it then you will have good success so success doesn't just happen we like it to because it seems like you know some people which just, it's a very irritation for me. Don't just act like overnight you just a blessing. You're walking in it. You know? Don't just act like you always were just so sweet. Don't just act, you know, like you were you hugging up here in church. Don't act like that's how you are 24-7. Let's be real. Amen? Let's be authentic. You ain't got to tell your business. But I always tell people, well, sometimes I was like, you know, he's still working on me. If I say something that I was like, you know, that was just not in love. Instead of saying, you know, I'm just having a bad day. Even a bad day don't erase that you just cut me because I'm still bleeding. You're saying just own it and say, you know what? By his stripes, you were healed. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, that was good. <laughs> don't do that if you cut someone. Just say, you know. Just own it. Just own, because I will take someone who will own what they, you know, so you can observe to do. God is like, you already forgiven. You're not trying to get forgiven. My blood already did it. So, you know, don't be in fear in speaking the word, thinking you have to get to a good place to speak the word. But the word is programmed to work. So don't you have to carry yourself in a certain way or be, you know, fake as they say. Just be real. Come to God and be real and say, God, I'm going to speak your word so I can observe to do. And somebody comes to you say, you know what, I need to work on that. Thank you. I'd rather me and you get in an argument. You know, like people get in arguments and you're like, oh, wow. You know, sometimes you don't hear each other. You're just waiting to get yours in. When you you're just like okay you're not thinking about what they're saying you're just like mm, I have a I have a comeback and then you're like man this is war <laughs> you know so I rather us getting a not that type of argument but I've had some just get in an argument and just say let's get it out then you walk around praise the Lord how are you doing no I'm doing good is everything okay oh everything's great that war just concerns me let's just get it out. And say, Father, heal us. Okay, I had some friendly fire. I did tell you. That was, I, I shouldn't have said that. But I was just trying to get you like you got me. But we can't come out of that place until we have the word in our hearts. Because if I don't plant the word in my heart, I'm going to respond based on what I feel. I'm going to respond in revenge. I'm going to respond in, because I'm hurt, I'm going to make sure ding I ding you do you see how important we put that word in us you understand that right 
in ourselves we can't live this life pleasing to him if we don't have the word in our hearts let's go to second Corinthians 4 13 so if you're speaking negative if you're complaining you're speaking doubt you need to uproot that unbelief are you there and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written what is written the word and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written I believe and therefore I speak and we also believe therefore we speak so you believe and then you speak but how are you gonna get to the place of belief is put that word in you it doesn't automatically happen with you just coming in here in this atmosphere of course you get enough to last you you're thinking wow I just had a day I come in here and you feel good the worship is so good and, you know it's like ooh, good but then guess what you got to go home that situation is gonna be like here I am <laughs> I'm still here <laughs> that situation is still there so you have to put the word in your heart so you can believe so you can speak believe and speak you cannot speak until you have that thing inside of you deep down I'm talking about as far as the word is concerned you put it in your heart say my heart is important say the program is already in the word the program is already in the word numbers 23 19 so when you have an established heart on the word you believe it speak it all of heaven goes to back you up when you have your heart established in the word you believe it and you speak it all of heaven goes to back you up all the angels are backing you up you know when you put that word establish that your heart on the word especially if you're believing God for something like when the enemy tried to um, attack my body again with um, cancer that's not a small thing and the news I will not repeat it hallelujah is was not good when you go in and the doctor tells you this is really bad I'm thinking like like what in the world like I don't have time for this you know what I mean you go to you know you go to um, to bed and I was having some physical symptoms one night I could hardly breathe thank you Lord and it's a miracle I'm standing here before you, you I, I haven't even told the whole thing but praise God I will tell you the whole thing I'm waiting for one little bit little bit left to manifest and I will tell you the whole thing but you know fear tried to grip me a couple of times because you know when you just you breathing right now with no interruption but when your breath is taken where you're fighting to breathe that is a, a scary thing so that had happened to me and I'm telling you so the next night I didn't I was I didn't want to go to sleep I didn't realize it was fear because I'm like two o'clock what am I doing up <laughs> you know and it's because I was you know the enemy was like fear and I say you know what I'm going to bed you threatening me that I'm gonna die but guess what if I do die I'm gonna go be with Jesus so you can take that bubble out in the name of Jesus you know you have to bust his bubble don't allow the enemy to torment you with his words with his darts you have to take the word and attack him not based on your words because your words then you know the thing got but God's word you got the whole of heaven the whole of the angels you fight with the word amen I would come here and father God in a name I was so tired one day I think somebody hugged me I don't know who it was and I felt like just like <laughs> you know when you felt like melting in somebody's arms that's how fatigued I was but I was just like the God I thank you I shall live and not die to declare the works of my God and I was praying for other people acting like I had nothing going on because of the Word of God I said I shall live and not die I don't care what my body is telling me that's the fact that the doctor is saying but I'm gonna they say the truth the truth is by his stripes I am healed 
You understand? But sometimes we're focused on what that fact is, what the doctor has said, what the financial person has said, what the issues with the family has said, what the sister has said, what this person has said. But you know what? That is real, and we're not going to walk in denial like it's not happening, but we're going to say the truth of what God says about it. He said he causes us to triumph always cause me to triumph in Christ Jesus and through me he shall diffuse the fragrance of him in every place that means when I'm done with this situation I am gonna tell all of how he brought me out hallelujah so you just watch and see I got nothing else to say and see that he always caused me to triumph so you gotta put that word inside of you when somebody asks you, how you doing? How's that situation? He always calls me to try up. What, so, you know, what is really happening? He always calls me to try up. If they don't get it, just keep. And after a while, you say, yeah, when you walk away, you'll get that real quick. That means I don't want to talk about it. He always calls me to try up. That's what it is. Isn't that good? I'm giving you all some good nuggets of how to respond to people. Hallelujah. That like to be in business, that's none of their business. Hey, just respond with the word. Because sometimes silence is a powerful thing. Silence in you speaking your opinion. Silence because your emotion get all involved. So by the time I start telling you, it's going to slight to my side. You know, I'm going to tell things about that person I shouldn't ever utter. So the best thing for me to say is that he always caused me to try. It is all well. Thank you for asking and thank you for thinking about me. You know, because they care. Some of them just nosy, but most people just care. Just say thank you, but it is well. And thank you for your prayers. But you're not going to, five people not going to pray for me by the time I walk out there. You can pray at home. Thank you. You know you don't do that to people, right? A side note, like if you know people, a sister came to me about this. If you know someone is going through, if they don't know that you know, you can still minister to them with the word of God without, because some people feel awkward like, oh my gosh, like oh, how did you find out? You know what I mean? So sometimes, you know, let God minister to you on that. You can still say, you know what, I'm here for you if you ever need me. You know, you can say, I'm praying for you. But don't just, you know something's happening with Minister Freed, and you're going to be like, and then he leave, and then Toya. Like, that make you feel like, take your hands off of me so I can leave. Your, huh? Be honest. Be honest. If you have a close relationship with that person, then of course, say, I am here for you. If ever you want to talk and if ever you need me, my code is text me 911. If you text me 911, I am going to stop whatever I'm doing unless I can't. And I'm going to call you, I'm going to pray. And I'm just going to listen. But if you don't text me, I don't know. But if you text me 911, Lynn is going to stop whatever she's doing if she can stop, if I have my phone. So you let someone, I'm here if ever you need me. I know you have something going on and I'm, I'm praying for you. But don't bombard people with your opinion and don't ask too many questions. Just give them a little scripture. You know, this helped me when I was going through and I just thought I would share it with you. That's a good thing. Amen? Gosh, you guys are getting all these good nuggets. <laughs> I'm just messing. But that's true though. Numbers 23:19. So you will have to load your heart with God will not fail. Then speak that. And it says, God it is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? And will he not do it? I think that's where these people get. Won't he do it? That's where. <laughs> but you know what? I, can't, I, I, I thought the other day, he already done it. So we don't have to say, won't he do it? He already did it. All right. Didn't he do it already? Yeah, that's good. All right, Minister Free. 
So God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it, and won't he not do it? Or has he spoken, and he will, will he not make it good? So you load your heart with that, and you speak that. No matter what the situation is, your mouth has to speak what's in your heart. And if you have to uproot something of unbelief or somebody telling you, Sister, I don't think God's going to come through this time. Just say, I know God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should repent. He said it and he will make it good. You say, well, I know what's really going on. God is not a man that he should lie. Not a son of man that he should repent. You asking for favor, you thanking God for favor, and I thank God there's a sister that we believed in faith for her situation that looked impossible. All the decks were stacked against her, I tell you. And she went, we agreed, and I spoke. I said, all you're going to do is you go in that situation, and you say, Father God, I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your favor. Don't look at your um, history because if we had to look at our history, we don't deserve nothing. That's why we speak the word. That's why we say the blood of Jesus. So you just say, Father, I thank you for favor. And then she texted me, and I was so happy. Everything went in her favor. And I was like, Father, I was like, ooh. I should have said, you know, on the phone where it has the dancing. I think it's a dance. And I want, but I was like, maybe I should send her a video of me dancing, you know. I was so happy because all the decks were stacked against her. But because she meditated on the word, she was here in church all the time, and she believed and prayed and said, you know what, I need you to stand and agree. And after church, I was like, let us pray. And I was thinking about her during the week, and I said, favor, you have favor, you have favor with that judge. You have favor, hallelujah, favor, and just say, yeah, you will take care of that just look at them and smile you might be shaking in your boots but speak the word I have favor you might be like oh my goodness in your mind but don't speak that you understand you shaking in your boots thinking you're going in here thinking "Ooh, Jesus but speak the word don't speak that negative speak because you will have what you say because if that's something that's in your heart, you will have it. So you speak God's word. You just say, I thank you, God, I have favor. I thank you, you always cause me to try him. I thank you, you're going to reveal to people. Because sometimes people have some ways in their hearts against you and you don't know why. God, I think you will reveal to them the truth. Hallelujah. I don't have to call and defend myself and explain myself. You are going behind the scenes. And I think you have a man somewhere to... Send someone to use their power and their ability on my behalf. Hallelujah. And you just rest your case. God is not a man that he should lie. So you load that in your heart. What the scripture says that let the weak say what? Let the weak say what? And even if you are physically weak, you say that you are strong. There were many days I would come in here weak as all get out. You have no well, maybe some of you have gone through whatever. But I was like, Father God, I thank you. I'm strong. I'm strengthened in might by the Holy Spirit. I thank you that my body is supernatural strength in Jesus' name. And it's amazing when you get into this kind of atmosphere. It's fueled. Not only you bring yours, everybody else's is here. Amen. And I think there's a, a sound when we do worship. There's a sound of faith. There's a sound. And I think that vibration gets into your body. And it's like you got to align with the when you start worshiping God and saying what God says, your body has to align. Your mind has to align. Your emotions has to align. Because you say, it is all well with me. Hallelujah. My body, though it is weak, but God, I am strong. Wrong. do you see that so you don't rehearse to everyone I'm weak I'm weak I'm weak I'm weak I'm weak I'm weak let's go to Proverbs 18 21 most of you should know that scripture death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit so death and life 
So you have to choose. You have to know the connection between what you're saying. That's an indicator that's what's inside of you. And you are going to be the benefactor of something good or something bad. It's in the power of your tongue. You can bless or curse somebody. But you have to choose to bless based on the word of God. Because if you curse someone, I promise you, that seed will come back into your life. Whether or not you do it and they know that you're doing it or not, that seed will come back into your life. I always say, if you have an opportunity to say something bad, kind of find a way to just hold your tongue. Amen? And only the word of God can help us do that, right? The word that we will not sin against him. That sometimes is at the edge of your tongue to say something mean or something bad. That's when silence. You just silent. And you say, you know what? I will talk to you later. You have a great day. Or if you know the person to be just nice, maybe they were nice, nice to you. But you say, yeah, she is really nice. He's really nice. If that's all you can say, just say that. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. You see that? So only speak God's word. Let's go to Mark eleven twenty two, And then you guys will leave and you still have some extra time to get home and be like, Oh, we got out early because Pastor wasn't here. <laughs> we always get out early. Past people be happy too because they're like, Oh my gosh, church is over early because <laughs> Pastor's not here. Amen. Y'all know y'all think that. Come on. It's not a, a I'm, I'm not a bad thing, but obviously the time of preaching is different, you know, because he's the man of God. He should have the most time, right? Amen. Mark eleven twenty two. it says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, but does not doubt in his but does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things that he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. So whoever says to the mountain, be removed, but you don't doubt in your heart, but that you believe that what you say, it says you will have what you say. Don't doubt in your heart. Believe it and you will, have, you will tell that mountain to be removed. You will tell that situation. You line up to the word of God in the name of Jesus. You line up even if you made a mistake and you need a correction. You said, Father God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you you're going to turn that situation around. I thank you now and you speak to that situation. You say, turn in my favor right now. And you believe that in your heart and you speak it out of your mouth. If a sister or a brother, you know when Jesus went to pray for that little girl that she, you know, they were getting in mourning and everything. And he told them she's not dead. She's not sleeping. And the scripture says that they ridiculed him. Laughing at him because he said that she's only sleeping. So speak the word of God even if you are going to be ridiculed. Stand on the word of God even people are looking at you funny. You speak the word because with that little girl, guess what? She woke up. So when you speak the word and you declare the word that's in your heart, like I said, just let the manifestation speak for itself. Let them continue to ridicule you. Let your coworkers continue to think that you're spooky. Okay. That's where I've gone. Okay. If that's what you believe, okay. But in a couple of months, guess who's asking for prayer? Right? So you can't have people determine you backing, dialing back on speaking the word. You can't let circumstances have you dialing back on meditating on the word of God so that you can observe to do. You understand that? That's how I received um, my manifestation, praise the Lord, as I meditated on it. And when my body spoke to me, I spoke back to it with the word. 
I'm not just going to lay here and let you torment me, you foul thing. You get out of my house in the name of Jesus. If you're depressed because there's darkness, hallelujah, it don't get bright till like 10 o'clock and it's haunting you and you're depressed. You're thinking, my God, 4 o'clock and it's already dark. And you, some of you, are just, you're just letting that depression just come and you wear it as like you like that's the blanket and you in that isolation that nobody knows we see you here and you're happy praise the Lord but then you go home to that torment you better say get out of my house in the name of Jesus you foul thing get out in the name of Jesus I am calm it's calm and quieted within me it is well with my soul I am not being moved from my emotional stability in the name of Jesus because he said that he's given me peace hallelujah so I thank you for peace and when you put that in your heart and you say it out of your mouth the heaven goes everything the atmosphere goes to make that happen for you but if you just lay here or you sit there and take it you're gonna speak the negative you're gonna go down you know that right because within ourselves we cannot do it within ourselves we cannot do it you know that right it's only the word and I want you to, to, to I keep saying it fight past that emotional pull to dial back on the word of God because of life that's happening because it's difficult guess what everybody's hand can go up because they got something happening right can we say everybody that's got something going on just raise your hand I'm not asking you what it is just just admit you got something going on you got somebody talking about you someone likes you and then someone don't Someone is talking in your favor and someone's not. The money is good, now then it's not. The children are acting good, they're loving on you, then they're not. The family members are fighting you like, what's going on? Can we just all get along this week, please? You know, but you can't allow these, th or sin. We fall into sin because we don't get in that word. So I want you to fight against that, against that loneliness where you just like, sister, you just don't get it. I said, well, maybe I don't get that specific situation you're going through. I can't say I know exactly how you feel. If I haven't been through that, I don't know exactly how you feel. And even if I might have gone through the same thing, it, your situation is your experience, right? So let's, let's get past that. Like pastor say, what did he say? Grab 15. Grab 15. Get that word in your heart. Don't post it on Facebook and not put it in your heart. Don't text it to me and it's not in your heart. Do you hear that? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling work on you because you know it the scripture says that everything will pass away but the word so there's a time you will not be able to use that device because of the way this world is going that word has to be in your heart to sustain you through the difficulties of life for you to receive the promises of God I was in this meeting and I was just like, I'm from the islands, like, you know, like Cheers, you know, you, where everybody knows your name. Well, it wasn't a situation. But I was in the meeting thinking like, like, I'm in here, like, what in the world is going on? Like, I was, I was just like, thank you, Jesus. That's God. You ask, and I used to quote, you know, Father, I thank you for favor. That favor goes before me. I thank you for your favor. I did not do this. Your favor did this. So I thank you. I thank you, Lord, and give me the words to speak. You said the power to get well so that I may establish your kingdom. So whatever this situation is, I need you to go ahead and give me the words to say so I can look real intellectual and real smart so that when I leave here, I can't, you know, every opportunity, 
every opportunity to diffuse the fragrance of him in every place. Only the word can do that. How many business owners are in here? You are, you run your own business. Listen, that prosperity in your business, you better find a scripture on prosperity for you to stand for your business, for you to continue to have more clients, that you will not be in decline, that you will always, and even if there's a time where the, um, it's gone down, that you will have more than enough to sustain that time. Because even if we quote, well, you know, I will never fail. Well, we know that's not true, right? We have failures, but God sustains us even through failure. And I believe even through, like, even if you're afraid, do it afraid. Because when you do it, you will find your strength. Amen? So find that scripture for your business and speak it over your business every day. Even after the, you know, things are happening. Because that's, that's what's going to happen in business. You're going to be up and then sometimes you're going to have a rocky road. But you're going to have more than enough to just smooth through that. More than enough so you can walk out that job finally. Say thank you for how many years? But I'm done here. And you can sustain yourself. Even if you don't have something yet, but you say I have more than enough to be able to walk out and I can sustain myself. What scripture are you using to be able to do that? So you can call that in. Is that in your heart? Or is broke in your heart? Is broke or always asking everybody else for $20? Or Western Union for everybody. Is that what's in your heart? If that's what's in your heart, find the word that it says he wants you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. It says the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. For thank you, God, the blessings that you've given it to me. Lord God, I thank you there is no sorrow. So I'm not going to get a car and everybody thinking I'm riding high and then I, I can't make a $700 payment. So I thank you your blessings will not come like that in the name of Jesus. So I'm not going to make decision to keep up with the Joneses. Guess what? I'd rather have $100,000, $200,000 in my account and riding with my little escape than you driving your Mercedes or your BMW with $500 in your account. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the, what, what do you have in your heart? What do you have in your heart? Because out of it, the issues of life, your decisions you make with those things, with those cars and those houses and all of that, those come out of your heart. Are you glad I preached tonight? Oh, are you mad? <laughs> I'm just going to read this in your hearing. Whatever you said, that's I am, you will have. Whatever you say, I am, you will have it. It's going to follow you. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Then Jesus spoke to them, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the door. You see what he called himself? He spoke it. This is who I am. Not based on what you know, if you know my record or whatever, you know, people come to you, I know your record. So, so what's the problem? Is there something else? Let's move on to the next thing. You know I did that, and what's the next thing? You know a secret, and go tell everybody if you want, and I still be walking around because he said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I do not walk in condemnation. Be not condemned. Amen. You have to know, speak that in your heart so that when people come to you, try to call you out of your name, you tell them who you are. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have been washed with the blood of Jesus. So whatever mistakes that you know that I did, guess what? It's been washed in the blood of Jesus. Last Catherine Kuhlman said, guess what? I was walking down that street and that person died and it's in a graveyard. You trying to get them back up? I am not down there. I am being resurrected with Christ. So whoever you think that I am or whatever you think that you know, Jesus don't know it because he don't remember. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
But you have to have that in your heart. If you don't have that in your heart, you're going to fall for what they're calling you. You're going to fall for, you know what? You're always a loser. You're the loser, the black sheep in the family. Whatever you do, never succeed. How many businesses are you going to try there, sister or brother? They never fail. But I say, you know what? God is on my side. And he said he always caused me to try him. And guess what? I know something that I didn't know before. And I have the Holy Spirit that I didn't tap into before. I have him and I know better and I want to do better. And just say, just watch me walk. Drop mic. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all better stop messing with me. <laughs> uh, did you receive tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this went a little different than I expected, but I believe, and I went a little over, but I believe God is pleased with what was said. And I want you to leave here with an assignment. We don't want this on the tape. 